Hi there and welcome to a new video. So basically, Grout 4.3 release candidate 2 has literally been released a second ago. So in today's video, we're going to be checking all the details out in this new version. So here we are in this post and of course, first of all, we shouldn't be expecting lots of changes in release candidates and even we should expect less changes if it is the second uh, release candidate. This is just uh, for you to, to actually remember and always have in count. And also, as you can see, they didn't like have tons of improvements. They were literally less than seven improvements. And for example, if we take a look at release candidate one, we can see that we had over 200 improvements. So as you probably already know, release candidate one didn't have much stuff. So imagine here release candidate two that only has it, that it even has less than 70. For example, if we take here the last beta that was beta three, we can take a look at the fact that we had again over 300 improvements. Okay, that is what we should be expecting in in mostly any kind of release. So let's take a look at uh, beta number two. And once again, here we had something like 225, which is pretty close to uh, 300. So yes, for these kind of simple uh, versions, let's say that they don't have a they aren't like without 4.0, for example, without 3.0, we shouldn't be expecting like thousands of changes, okay? Um, but well, um, I wanted to mention this because, well, I, I actually noticed that there was a new version released, well, because of the without engine uh, Twitter or X or however it's called right now. As you can see, basically, it seems that they had some leftover bugs. Um, so so yes it was something like maybe it wasn't like an emergency but something that was sudden uh that, that wasn't um that wasn't really the, the idea to update lots of things and to fix lots of things i actually take a look took a look at uh, the list that as you can see it is quite quite uh small and i didn't find anything worth mentioning okay literally all were fixes 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 and i didn't find anything like new that is worth mentioning of course I am not expecting anything new in a release candidate, but well, something that is worth mentioning in the video, I didn't find anything. Um, but well, let's get right to downloading this version. I'm in Windows, so I will download that version. And as I always like doing, I, I always want to mention the new features in Growth 4.3, just in case that you are uh, missing something. Um, so, well, of course, here the interface is the exact same one from the previous one. So, the first feature that we have over here is in the settings. Um, we have the network mode. I By default, it will come in offline, but this will allow us to automatically check for new updates. Right now, as I am in the latest version, I am not going to have any kinds of updates. But uh, here I have Godot uh, 4.2, the, the latest, like, stable version. So, here it won't pop up since the recent... A, a most recent stable version um but well if i download it over here i will download uh for example release candidate one uh, as you can see here it pops up 4.3 release candidate two so i should be taken to the corresponding page okay then other thing that is new here in the settings is the directory naming convention so this will determine how the directory, the project path is named. Uh, so you have tons of patterns that you can use. For example, probably the one that you may want to use is Pascal case or snake case. So if I select Pascal case over there, it is going to be following that pattern. Um, if I select snake case, it will follow that pattern. So it is quite simple to understand this new feature. Of course, this isn't something that will completely revolutionize the engine or something like that. But well, these are options that add some more customization uh, inside of the engine. And now I am inside of a project, so I will start off uh, by mentioning the main differences that we have with previous versions. We have here small adjustments in the UI with these buttons over here, by the way. Um, so the first thing has to do with parallax, okay? So we used to have a, a, a para, well, we have a parallax layer, and uh, we also used to have the uh parallax background okay so to create some kind of parallaxing you would do this and then instead of here a sprite 
But now, instead of having to do all that, you would just add a parallax to the node that, as it says here, it's meant to replace parallax background and parallax layer. Basically, it means to join up parallax background and layer in just one node. And as you can see, it provides similar uh, settings to the background. As you can see, you have the scroll and you have some things quite similar. And you also have here the... And basically, here, if you add a sprite, okay, you, you will basically load in here any sprite that you want. And this will behave as an independent ba parallax background, okay, besides, uh, sorry, allowing you to uh, not have uh, uh, two nodes, okay, you would only have one, and you always have to still use the, the sprite. And now, for example, let's say that in your existing projects, you have tons of parallax layers, tons of parallax backgrounds, or whatever. So you may think, okay, I want to adapt this to newer versions. Um, I will delete this one just for to avoid uh, having duplicated things. Here, as you can see, when I select the background, I can click over here and convert to Parallax 2D. So I will have converted everything inside of a node 2D and then Parallax layer, uh, that are basically the Parallax 2D nodes, the new nodes that we saw. So yes, indeed, if you have existing projects uh, using Parallax background and Parallax layer, there is no problem, okay? Adapting this to the newer versions is super straightforward. Then exchange has to do with tile maps. Until now, we just had the tile map, but well, here it is marked as deprecated. This means that it could be deleted soon and it's no longer going to be receiving any kind of update. So we we'll basically suggest from now on to start using tile map layers. Okay. So I will add a tile map anyway, so that we see the differences. Of course, the system is the exact same one. You still have to create a tile set um, and you can paint things around, etc. The main difference is the fact that here in tile maps, you have the layers, okay, that you assign over here. So you may have here different layers. And basically, well, here you were able to modify the sorting of them, the color, um, whatever. But well, now the idea is that to, to basically have better organization, to have instead of everything in one node, to have things separated in different nodes. So once again, here you may have your own stuff. So I will quickly go over and add a new tile set as I as you would do. This is just an example. So I will use here the, the without icon. There is no problem. Um, so here, yes, I would have the um, the tile map working. So I was painting here in layer zero. Um, and let me select here all the without icon. And I will paint, for example, a line over there. And I will make this line some kind of a pink color then in layer one i will paint more without icons and i will make these ones yellow and in the last layer i will paint more without icons right there and um let me make here other color maybe something like an orange color okay exactly like this so let's say that these were these were your your layers. Um, so it is super simple because you just have to click over here and you will click extract time up layers as individual time up layer nodes. You click over there and you will have each time up layer node created correctly. As I told you, they use the same tile set, so it is super easy to use all this. And instead of here having the time map, you can basically right click on it, change type, and here select a node to the Okay, so you just have like a wrapper there and your different tile map layers. Now, the last change that is worth mentioning coming in good out in the next version um, in 4.3 is basically the new way that good out has to organize groups to create new groups. So now if you select a node and go to the node tab groups, you will see that well, we have now sync groups and global groups. This is quite self-explanatory. Basically, sync groups, you can only assign them in the current scene and global groups you can assign them in any scene for example i will create here a new group and i will name this one group one you can add a description only if you make this global okay so if it's if it is a scene group it's not going to be able to have any kind of description so there i go my node 2d is inside of the group one but if i create here other group okay it doesn't matter if it is 2d or 3d of course um i'll click here d plus and this is going to be my group two. So as you can see, I, I don't see here my group one group, and I don't see it either here. 
uh, but well, right here, if I create other one, I'm going to call it, it for example, uh, global group. I'm going to make this global and I will put the description of this is a global group. Okay, and I'm going to be able to see it here. And also, something that is actually quite useful about this is the fact that now you're going to be able to check and uncheck um, this field over there in order to assign a group. So you no longer have to type manually the, the group name to assign nodes. So this will avoid some spelling issues that can actually lead to errors. And also now you can basically copy here the group name so that then let me quickly create here a script and we'll see that indeed I had that I had the, the group name copied. I will copy now group one there I've got it now group two and there I go so yes indeed we hadn't have much changes in uh group 4.3 release candidate 2 but well, probably after this release candidate 2 I don't think that we are going to be having more than one more release candidate or even if we are going to be having one more release candidate because well as you can see we we went from 300 changes to 70 changes okay um from release candidate one to release candidate two i'm talking about so probably in the next few days next week uh monday tuesday let's say that we should be expecting to have some news about group 4.3 maybe the first release um or something similar okay so i will try to be the first one of uploading that's new in the channel so if you want to uh, be the first one on knowing these latest news about growth make sure that you are subscribed to the channel with the bell on as well so see you in the next one and bye bye